Hi, everyone. Hope you're all doing well, staying safe out there. Uh, I wanted to make a video introducing the Desmos Art Project. Uh, I know a lot of you already know about this project because I've assigned it to you already or you've done it before. Um, but this year, there's a little added incentive. Desmos is doing a, a competition with a cash prize. So um, even if I never assigned you this project, it's, it's a good way to, uh, to have something to do um, during the school closure. Um, so uh, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of uh, uh, an idea of, of the basics of what you should be doing here um, and also give you some, some tricks on how you can make a, a nice drawing in Desmos. Uh, there are directions posted in the assignment in Google Classroom, some more very specific directions um, with details and some other tricks and hints that you can use. Uh, there's also some links to uh, some of the examples that I'm going to show. Um, you can find all that in Google Classroom. Going forward, I will be posting other tasks and projects in Google Classroom. I will also be putting up little intro videos like this one. Um, so be on the lookout for that. So uh, for this project, the Desmos Art Project, um, of course, you're going to have to use Desmos. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is make an account. Um, you can use your uh, Google account with the school. Um, so once you have an account, uh, you can actually save your graph for later, so you don't have to do it all at one time. Um, but yeah, that's the first thing you're going to want to do, because if you don't do that, you're going to have no way to save your graph, and it's going to be harder to share your graph also. So I'm going to sign in. Um, and this way, this little save button pops up here, and I can save my graph whenever I want to. Uh, a lot of people end up um, taking a picture that they already that they already have or that they can download from the internet and sort of uh, use that to base their own Desmos drawing off of. Uh, so for example, in this picture, you can see that behind the Desmos graph, there's actually an actual image that's been uploaded to uh, Desmos and you can sort of trace your drawing around that picture. Uh, that's definitely one way that you can go about doing this project. However, if you're going to enter your drawing into the competition, you will not be able to do this. And I'll get into more details on that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's up to you whether or not you want to trace your drawing around a picture. Um, but if you would like to submit your picture to Desmos uh, for the competition, I would avoid doing that. Um, so the way that you're actually going to make your picture is by graphing functions in Desmos. So for example, maybe I want to put uh, some kind of U-shaped curve. So I graph a parabola. Oh, also I like to use projector mode. Projector mode makes the graphs easier to see. Um, so maybe I graph this parabola, y equals x squared, uh, and I graph, maybe I want to um, graph, I don't know, a horizontal line. So I graph y equals three. Okay, so that doesn't really look like a picture yet. I'm gonna need a lot more graphs in order to make this look like a picture. Um, but maybe I decide for whatever reason I wanna move this parabola up a little bit. Well, thinking back to all the transformations we've done with all the different kinds of functions, I know that I can add one to x squared to move it up one unit or maybe move it up two units. But the idea here is that I'm going to use the transformations in order to move the graph around, or maybe vertically stretch the graph, or maybe vertically uh, shrink the graph, or maybe reflect the graph. But I'm going to have to use all of the transformations in order to <coughs> in order to uh, change the graph around to make the shape that I want to make. Uh, something else you're going to need to do is you probably don't want the entire parabola in your picture. You're going to notice that all of these pictures have lines in them, but the lines are cut off at certain points. Um, or they might have other kinds of curves, but part of the curve is cut off. So how do I cut part of the curve off? Well, I can restrict the domain and the range in each of the, in each of the functions. To do that, we use the curly brackets. So this, these are curly brackets here. So I put in some curly brackets, and this allows me to restrict either the domain or the range or both. 
I can either cut the graph from left to right, I can cut it up and down, or I can do both. Um, so for example here, let's say I wanted to cut the parabola uh, between this point and this point. Well, if I'm cutting from left to right, I know that I want to only keep the part of the graph between negative 1.732 and positive 1.732. So what I do is I type in negative 1.732 is less than or is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 1.732. And now I only have the part of the parabola between those two points between one point, negative 1.732 and positive 1.732. So that's one way to cut the graph. I can also restrict the range. In order to restrict the range, I do the same thing, but instead of x, I use y. So to keep that same part of the graph, I'd want the part of the graph between 0 and 3. So I would say 0 is less than or equal to y, Oops. is less than or equal to 3 and I only keep that part of the graph. Again, I can do both. So if I wanna keep just that part of the graph, but also just the left side of that parabola, I can also restrict the domain. So I could do, for example, this. And I've restricted the domain and the range, and I only have this small piece of the parabola. Okay, so <clears throat> you're gonna have to do this for pretty much every single uh, line or curve that you create because most of these most of these curves and lines go on forever and you're only going to want a small piece of them. Uh, something else you're going to probably want to do is make a circle at some point. Um, a circle is not a, a curve that we really covered in many of your classes, but it's very easy to graph. Um, a circle, basically you need to know two different things. You need to know, well, where is the circle? on the coordinate plane, so where is the center of the circle specifically, and also how big is the circle, how big is the radius of the circle. So um, the formula for a circle looks like this. So there are three different numbers that you need to know. You need to know H, K, and R. Uh, H and K tell you where the center of the circle is, and R tells you the radius of the circle. So the center of this circle would be at the point two comma two. We have H is two, K is two, and the radius of the circle you can see is one, two, three units. So three squared is nine. So we set this all equal to nine. So I can change the center by changing H and K. So if I wanna move the circle to the right, um, I can change this two to a five. Now it's the circles move to the right. It's going to move the, the circle up and down. And I can change the radius of the circle by changing this 9. Maybe I want the radius to be 4 or 5 or 10. Um, but I can change all of these numbers in order to uh, move around and change the size of the circle. You also, at some point, might want to make an ellipse an oval, an egg shape. <clears throat> in order to do this, there's a different formula, but it looks really similar to, um, to the formula for a circle. So this is the uh, formula for an ellipse. And again, H and K tell you where the center of the circle is. Now, uh, sorry, not circle, ellipse. Now an ellipse sort of has two radii. There's like how wide the ellipse is and there's how tall the ellipse is. A, this number A, is going to tell you how wide the ellipse is. So let me make that a nine maybe. And then B is going to be how tall the ellipse is. And maybe I make that 25. So we can see that from the center, which is two comma two, uh, the distance from the center to the left or the right end is three, one, two, three. And the distance from the center to the top of the bottom is five, one, two, three, four, five. So I can change, again, I can change the center by changing um, these twos. Maybe I wanna go down three units here. 
but I can also change how wide the circle or the ellipse is by changing this nine to maybe 100. Uh, I can change how tall the ellipse is by changing this 25 to maybe nine or 60 or 600. Um, so these numbers all change the size and the location of the ellipse. Okay, so these are the basic things. Um, you can make a very nice drawing using all of these tricks that I've already shown. Uh, so here's an example of BMO from Adventure Time. Um, you can see that there's a lot of lines in here. Uh, there's also the B face has, oh, these are the eyes of the B. The B wings, we've got some, um, we've got parts of ellipses here. Uh, yeah, you can see that the range and the domain have been restricted. Uh, here's another example that we saw already. Here's some boba, some happy boba cups. Um, all of these, I think, are on my wall, so you might have seen these in my classroom also drawn out. Here's the Royal Claymore from uh, Breath of the Wild. Um, this one has a, has a lot of different functions, over 100 for sure. Um, here's just a really simple example that I made uh, with a person on a hill with a house. You can see that all kinds of different functions are used here. There's circles, there's lines, there's a parabola, there's a rational function. Um, the number of the, the kinds of functions you use is totally up to you, but some functions work better than others for different shapes. Um, okay, some other things, if you're doing the Desmos competition and you wanna submit your, um, your graph to Desmos, uh, some things that you might wanna include are things like shading. So um, to do shading in Desmos, instead of doing an equal sign, you use an inequality. So for example, I could do instead of y equals x squared, y is uh, greater than x squared. And now I've got some shading there. Uh, the line's gonna be dotted, but if you do greater than or equal to, the line will stay solid. Um, so you can do uh, all kinds of different shading. So let's say I did another circle, I could shade the inside of the circle by making the equals into an inequality. Okay, um, other things you might wanna do include things like uh, animations. So um, let's say again, I had this parabola, but I wanted to move the parabola up and down, animate it up and down. Well, Desmos has these things called sliders. Uh, so if you add some, other variable like K or, or A or B or really anything besides X or Y. Um, you can add a slider. And uh, if you press the play button on the slider, you can see the graph change as that value of K changes. The numbers that you can, that K changes between are this negative 10 and the 10. So maybe instead of negative 10, I wanna do zero to five. And now instead of going from negative 10 to 10, it'll just go from zero to five. Uh, there's animation properties you can, you can play around with, repeat in one direction, um, play once, uh, I don't know what this guy is, play indefinitely. Uh, you can change the speed. Um, and when you click on the zero to five, you can change the step. So if right now it's going, I don't, I don't know what the steps are, but, um, I could change it uh, so that it's doing steps of one, so it's from one to two to three to four to five, uh, and you're gonna see that the graph jumps around um, and it's not as smooth now. Okay, so that's animating. Um, I'm gonna show you some other examples also. So here's an example from last year of a treasure map with a knife in it and a compass. Uh, here's a couple examples of some animation. So here's uh, Ditto Chew, uh, and you can see that the little bottom part uh, wiggles around. That's an animation. Here's another animation of a car driving along, and you can see that the animation are the tires and the ground moving up and down. And these are all done with sliders. So let's see if I can find the slider for this one. Yeah, so this number changes and that animates the graph. Okay, uh, so this is all useful for actually making your drawing. 
Um, if you would like to submit your graph to the Desmos competition, you will need to submit your graph to me and then I will submit it to Desmos. Um, Desmos is having the teachers submit all the graphs. So if you want to do a submission, please let me know. Uh, there is a link to the actual directions for the competition in uh, the Google Classroom assignment. Um, the project is due April 30th. If you're planning on submitting something, I would strongly recommend you read through all of this. Uh, the most important thing here is that you may not submit any copyrighted work. The graphs must be the original work of the student. Um, so that means that a lot of these, for example, the Ditto Chew is copyrighted. That's the property of Nintendo. Um, this is not copyrighted. This was original. This was an original drawing. This treasure map here. Um, but Anything where you are taking a picture from the internet is probably copyrighted. Uh, so that's why I said at the beginning that if you want to submit something to Desmos, you try to not take a picture from the internet. Uh, and instead come up with your own picture and then try and draw that in Desmos. Um, well, I think that is it. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to email me, ahood at sjusd.org. Um, again, the directions are posted with the uh, with the Google Classroom assignment, um, so you can get more information there as well. Um, I hope you all have fun with this. It's a fun project. Um, it, it's fun to play around with the graphs and, and see your, your picture uh, come together. Um, but yeah, again, any questions, please feel free to email me. I hope you're all doing well. Um, stay safe out there. Uh, I'll post another video soon with another task. Take care.